available at the front of the table, and we will be allocated up to three minutes uh, to speak. We will begin with uh, Kevin Zerman. Good morning, ASDA Board, Ed Moderman, Executive Director of Connect Tampa Bay, which is 20 East Cumberland Avenue. I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about spam, disinformation, and that rancor that tends to come with it. So, as you know, we were all of your emails, and anybody who's ever asked any information from CSDA from public practice requested by people who often disagree with, I don't know, many of my members. And that's fine, that's exactly what they're allowed to do in the world. But what I'm really concerned about is the tone of which things are taken. Last week, Connect Tampa, a couple weeks ago, Connect Tampa Bay went out and pointed out that many paid agents and campaign operatives have gone out and called people Nazis and called people ter terrorists. Many will probably stand up after me right now and probably get very close to saying that again. What I think is most important for this board to understand today is what's happening right now is an email that went out just the other day. The email is concerning whether or not about dark service. That email, because they public record requested your emails, and their paid agent gave them the email addresses he public record requested, went out and claimed that DART is available to every single senior on a discount. Which you, as board members, who review the budgets and understand how DART works, know isn't true. It's available to people who are disabled and qualify for the eligible discount. Most seniors need to rely on all the bus service. It also likes to claim the idea that green light isn't important for DART. But the reality is, they're misinforming these seniors who should be using the service that DART is available on a discount only within three quarters of a mile of the routes you currently have. And if people cut the routes, which is what the people who sent this email out want to do, then DART service will be cut. Sole regular service for seniors. Now this misinformation is getting into the hands of people who have simply just contacted TSTA for information. And I think it's important that we set the record straight when people try to get that kind of misinformation out there or rancor about all kinds of stuff. Because what happens is people start pushing out information and they start, oh, this is the most terrible thing in the entire world, this is happening. And this other piece, this other piece of information I got from PSTA is the most terrible information in the entire world. And all that's really left in between are the people who need to use the service to get to the doctor's office, to get to work. We're going to misunderstand how this goes. And the truth of the matter is, is that whether we're going to talk about whether uh, you know whether we're going to talk about emails that PSTA sent to each other and staff, and we're going to misquote that and truncate that information, or we're going to truncate information about part. I encourage the leaders on this dais to stay clear of that. I encourage the leaders on this dais to focus on what is important to you, which is the mobility and the future of the people of Panama. In just a few weeks, the people are going to decide the issue about whether or not they're going to raise the sales tax to bring like Pinellas. And that's important, but we can never lose sight of what's most important, which is the truth about how we move people around this town. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, um, and folks, you see the three minutes? Okay, you're right on time. Folks, you have three minutes, and I'm about to speak to that. Uh, next is Phil Council. Good morning, Phil Compton. Senior Organizing Representative of the Sierra Club Florida office in St. Petersburg, 1990 Central Avenue. I'd like to uh, add to some of the things that Mr. Thurman just said. There's been a lot of criticism, to say this. There's been a lot of criticism of the green light and all this plan. But I want to tell a story about uh, the people who have been talking about that and making those claims and making those statements and what they said. A year ago, over a year ago, before this went to ballot, before you approved this plan, I had the opportunity to be on the Florida Matters show on WSF FM 89.7. Uh, with me on the panel was Brian with the uh, Connect Tampa Bay, um, Dr. David Caleb, and Barb Hazel representing No Tax Tracks. And in the course of that conversation that day, uh, Ms. Hazel then made the remark that the solution to the problem of the shortage of funds that PSEA is projected is simply to eliminate the routes that have the fewest rights. And she's using, referring to uh, information bar graphs that PSDA <coughs> has used. PSDA has, and you've seen this presentation many times yourself, two sets of bar graphs. <coughs> One shows the relative number of riders per route. The other shows 
the number of riders per hour per route. The routes that Ms. Hazeldunn and No Tax for Tracks would eliminate as their solution to the problem of funding are the routes that do not run as long, but when they do run, they have just as many riders. The DART services that Mr. Thurman referred to depend upon having those routes. People would lose service in this county if voters followed their advice. I corrected Ms. Hazel on the show that day, and I thought, as any reasonable person would, that, okay, we all make mistakes, here's new information, I neglected to look at the second step of data. Now, they have continued to use this as one of their primary talking points to try to fool the voters into thinking that this is an inefficient agency, that you don't know what you're doing and you're not to be trusted with the taxpayers' dollars. That's the real story. That's the story that should be in the newspaper. And I hope that you stay the course and consider the source as you look at these criticisms and look at the future here. Sierra Club supports Green Life and Ellis. Thank you for moving forward. Thank you. Next speaker is Bill Buffalo. Somebody was negotiating with me about getting in my time. I thought I would. Quicker than I could be. So, good morning, everybody. I, you know, I, I just want to reiterate what you already know and what I want everybody else to hear again. The people who are opposed to this plan, this Green Life and Ellis, are persistently and consistently wildly inaccurate about the facts they throw out, the assertions they throw out as facts, and the, and the claims that like the outcome of um, doing the project. These people can vote Hitler and Al Qaeda when they talk about the people who uh, support the plan and, and you, the school. It's just, it's beyond common sense, and we have to remember that. The incredible good this project is going to uh, provide this area and how important it is when you have to go for a pass cut. Please keep it in mind. Uh, we're under pressure. I understand that. I'm, I'm a bit clumped here, but, I, but it, it's just important to, uh, to know that we support you. Most people will support you. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is George Root.
those who have a lesser concern for the community at large hold the day in their misinformation and their lack of generosity. So I remember those like the Boyd family who gave the right away when he was 19. I remember Jay Starkey whose land was providing us with water and Floridians who have made what's possible for us to have water like we have now are those who are willing to look toward the future and build something instead of tearing down what we have and making the future less than it could be for everyone without exception. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is um, Dr. Jane Webb. <coughs> Good morning, uh, Dr. Murphy, Eugene Webb, and Ellis Park. Uh, I'm sure you're going to hear more about uh, Mr. Miller's emails and his action toward this board of the public in just a few minutes. But I would remind you that uh, about three meetings ago, I asked you all to release those emails, uh, and you didn't. And while it probably would not have changed the context, it certainly would have eliminated the shock value of the recent disclosures. Today, however, I come to you with a different question. Uh, from a formal public records request that I made, uh, no formal document authorizing Mr. Miller's order to prepare and send a $350,000 check to Homeland Security was ever produced. VSTA counsel cited Section 9 of Policies and Procedures, but a review of that shows no authority to spend unbudgeted funds or any funds without the board's approval. So I would ask you today, was there a board authorization before or after the fact to pay Homeland Security the $350,000? Or did Mr. Miller just on his own have a check cut for $350,000 and is that going to be standard operating procedure? Secondly, I've attended a PST board meeting after board meeting and watched as all of you who are elected officials and citizens sit here with that sort of deer in the headlights look while the CEO lies to you and the chairman supports him and no one ever raises a question. I've come to believe it's the Norm Roche effect. For some reason, you fear the leadership will throw you off the board if you question their actions. You're not here to add to your campaign resume. I think it's time for this board to get some backbone. If you really believe in Greenlight, if you really believe this is the solution for Pinellas County's transportation future, then prove it. Don't ask for Mr. Miller's resignation. Someone make a motion and remove him from office today, right now. If you believe in this thing, if you think it's the way we ought to go, then it ought to have the kind of leadership that the public can trust you. Prove to the voters that the PSDA board and Greenlight is worthy of the commitment of $130 million a year and give them confidence that you, as their elected representatives and board members, will look out for their interests. You haven't done that as far as I can see up to now. If you cannot or will not do that, then this referendum does not deserve the voters' support. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Webb, and we will uh, respond to your question about the authorization for the return of funds. Um, as far as the Norman Roach effect, I believe in elections. Uh, and almost everyone on this board was elected, and the people understood what we stood for when we were elected or re-elected. Uh, those are the folks who are reported. Those are the folks who are accountants. The next speaker is Paul Carter. <laughs> Uh, good morning, uh, I'm Chairman from Dust and PSPA board members. Uh, my name is Paul Carter. I live in St. Petersburg, and I want to talk today about the Citizens Oversight Committee for Greenlight and Ellis. Uh, overall, I believe PSPA is well-run operationally. That's been reflected in the audits done by Ernst & Young. Uh, while the focus of PSPA may have strayed a bit, uh, I believe that the continued uh, efforts of telling more people about the Green Light Plan uh, is important. And the more people who learn about the plan and know about it, uh, I think the more positive they become. Uh, Pinellas County has done big things before. Uh, I believe that together we can do big things again. Uh, regardless of all the rhetoric, and we've heard some of it this morning, we need a better transit plan. It has to be our plan serving our people, and it must be accountable and fiscally sound. Uh, I believe the New Citizens Oversight Committee will play an important role, uh, together with this board, in providing continued oversight of the agency. 
Uh, I'm retired after about 30 years in the advertising and agency business. Um, I served as dean at a large community college. Uh, most recently, uh, I was director of marketing and strategic initiatives at the Morgan Art Center in St. Petersburg, uh, helping to launch the Chevrolet collection. I also sit on, uh, I think it's five or six, uh, not-for-profit boards. Um, I'm here to volunteer my services on the Citizens Oversight Committee. I believe this committee can be a tool to work with the SGA, with the board and the community to make sure that we get the best transit system at the best price. Uh, many people have worked really hard to make Pinellas County a special place to live and to work. And I hope we can all work together to get this done right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. The Citizens Oversight Committee is very important to the board. We authorized that a couple of meetings ago. And I'm saying the applications are available on our website right now. We have kind of PSTA <coughs> Please apply for them. Uh, next speaker is Chuck Terzian. Good morning. Good morning. Chuck Terzian was a long-time resident of Pinellas County. Uh, grew up and rode the buses quite, uh, quite a lot. And when I was a kid, it was the only way I got around to go to the mall and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm a big fan of public transportation. I currently work for a company based out of San Francisco. to see their public transportation system on a frequent basis. They, uh, on a larger city, but um, it's obvious that they've already gone through a lot of the growing things that we're seeing now. And that's what you're really seeing. You're seeing people that are hanging on to the old way or the old idea of how things should be done. People that also are hanging on to an ideology of government is bad. No government is what it's about. No public to transit authority do they want. They want to privatize. They're not looking for solutions. They're not looking to make this better. You see that in their automatic comparisons between Nazis and, and so on and so forth with other people. So most of you I, I've seen, or, or several of you I've seen, uh, deliberate on things that I trust your, your judgment <coughs> to consider facts and logic. And know that when somebody is presenting a, an option whether or not they're presenting you with facts and logic or filtered information, to, to put it nicely, and sort through that and only consider those things that are worthy of consideration and worthy of facts and logic. So um, that's really all I have to say. Please just use your best judgment. You know that you are supported by people. There's a lot of people that can't make it here, a lot of people that. Uh, aren't that comfortable speaking in front of other people that support facts and logic and not bombastic, the world is going to end. And, they, and they also this, this idea that they keep you know, putting forth, that it is, that their solution is simply to privatize. And any problems we have, public records requests don't work with private companies. That's not how, that's how it goes. You know, you are a part of the goals of citizen oversight. Well, you are part of our accountability measures. And there's certain things that you don't leave up to the goodwill of uh, uh, those that can hide. And um, so, you know, more power to you. Thank you for uh, helping move us forward into the last century, actually. We should have gone back here. But I appreciate the efforts everybody's uh, putting forward to who was support in our transportation. Next speaker is Devin Henderson. Hi, good morning. My name is Devin Henderson. I'm a 27-year-old college student here in Pinellas County. But I, I too have lived here my entire life. I was born in Bayburn Hospital and love this place and care about it deeply. Um, I'm very against the Green Life Pinellas plan uh, for many reasons. Um, one being that uh, the majority of, at least the beginning of the money is for uh, the light rail and has nothing to, you know, really to do with buses, but that's a whole other topic. I, I wanted to bring something up to you today that was, has been concerning me. Um, I, 
while I'm getting on the bus, you guys are familiar with the UPASS program, I'm sitting on the bus and a group of students is getting on. And I purposely got on at a stop further back than where the normal group gets on. And they get on the bus and the driver didn't count how many students was getting on the bus, yet went bop, 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 and was just pushing that UPASS button, just pushing. Just keeping on pushing. He didn't care how many times he was pushing it. He was just pushing. So this is, is going to help inflate these numbers. Although I can tell you as a student at SPC, I have not seen a dramatic increase in bus riders. Um, I just haven't, and I've been going there for two years, taking the bus the whole time. So I'm here to tell you right now, I have not seen a drastic increase in riders. Uh, <coughs> it's just, it's not about, it's about PSTA's flawed system and about its mismanaged system. Uh, you know, after what I saw, uh, Mike Decent, who, thank God he had to, to look out for the community. I mean, thank God. If, you know, if it wasn't for guys like Mike Decent, um, you know, who knows, we would have the wool pulled over our eyes all the time. But after I read these emails from Brad Miller, it, it just floors me that, uh, that uh, the PSTA CEO, your beloved security, will make sure we squeeze something in about your beloved security. It, this just shows the kind of thinking that management has, particularly the CEO. Um, I, I too feel that Brad Miller, I, I feel that Brad Miller should just resign. But uh, if Brad Miller won't resign today, I do think the board should go ahead and, and make a motion and take action to, to remove him today. Um, you can't just keep on deceiving the community and just continue to get away with it. It's happening over and over, and it's happening more often and on a larger scale than ever. Just imagine if this thing were to pass, which is not looking like it will, but just imagine if this thing were to pass, what it would be like then. I hope you guys get it together and make the right decision for the community. That is what you're here for, it's for us. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, could you give us the, Mr. Anderson? Yes, sir. Could you give us the route number where you observe this um, behavior? On the I, I, I'll, I'll, get it to, I'll get you a video here. If you have a video, that would be great. If not, just give us the information on when you observe it. I, I, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get you a video soon. Okay, thank you. Next uh, speaker is Jonathan Chambers. Uh, good morning, board. Uh, I'm Jonathan Chambers from St. Petersburg. Um, I'm here to uh, request that the PST board move. Green light head Brad Miller from his position. For abusing federal funds, that were designed to stop bus stop bus bombings and instead promote green light analysis, which of course would result in the highest sales tax in the state of Florida. Now we all know this. Um, we all know what's been in the news. Uh, we all know where I stand. I know where many of you stand. But as the board of directors. It's your responsibility, your fiduciary responsibility to the taxpayer <coughs> to make sure that it can run efficiently, properly, and above board. And there continue to be events after events that directly point out that Mr. Miller is not the proper person to be in the position of CEO. And I want to remind you of your responsibility as a board of directors to take care of the problem so we have an efficient, and well run and properly run PSTA. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Judy Peterson. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I've been with the no tax for tracks for about two or three years. I can't keep up because it's been forever, it seems to me. So. And I joined because I really did not want to see taxes increased. And I understand people's uh, not agreeing, and I, I get the disagreement. I'm okay with that, but I wanted to fight it. But in the last six months, I have been very disenfranchised to see what's going on with some of the tactics that are being used. Um, one of the tentacles of Friends of, uh, Friends of the Green Light, or 
Code Review Organization is, is paying U.S. Left students, this is a rumor mill, but it's somebody that actually has told this, um, to steal no tax for track signs. <laughs> you can laugh, but I'm telling you. I'm telling you, guys. Um, there's been some other things that have gone on that are just downright unsavory and not good. But I also realize that that's politics and it's a nasty, nasty business. So I get it. However, I have really watched with disgust at what's going on with the misuse of funds from the home Department of Homeland Security. Now the first time we decided, you guys decided, that um, Mr. Miller had made a mistake, he didn't know the rules, we're gonna forgive him, and we're gonna keep, let him keep his job. Well, I thought that that was kind of squishy, but I'm like, okay, I get it, I get it. But this last thing that came out Friday, is ridiculous. The man knew what was going on. He doesn't care. He could come up for federal charges. And if you guys want to let him continue to keep his job, you may want to think of the implications should he be charged for the federal indictment. Now I know for me for one, would just assume not let him have one more penny of my money. Thank you, Ms. Peterson. Uh, let me just ask you a question. Did you read all of the emails? <coughs> I did. I read the Vice President's report. Okay, thank you. Next speaker is Tom Rask, speaking for himself, and Sully um, Brasso. I believe that's a cameraman, so you have a total of six minutes. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I hope you read my emails. Uh, my question is very simple. It is, will there be a at grade crossing on Homerton? I'm waiting to hear an answer because the PSDA staff told me yesterday that that decision is yet to be finalized. And just to review for the audience and for those watching at home, in March, when I requested a list of signalized intersections, Homerton is not on that list. We're talking about where Roosevelt hits Homerton over there, the west side, around 44th Street, not right over here where, all, where Roosevelt was southbound from Homerton. It was not on that list. And since the Gateway Connector was announced, which involves an elevated toll road going north-south over there, I got an email in which Ms., which a PSDH staff, it doesn't matter their name, but wrote that they're coordinating with FDOT to have a light rail go under under the elevated toll road. And there has been an email exchange with PSTA staff and you've been kept informed. So, so the Ulmerton, the light rail crossing on Ulmerton has moved from not being a street level intersection to it's been moved out of that column into a column of possibly being one. And to say that that decision is going to be finalized after, sometime later is, is just not believable. That tells me that there will be, there will be a street level that means at, that the technical term is at grade, street level crossing on all. And this is the busiest county road, this section of county road out here, over there. It's the busiest of any in the county, as you can see from the link I sent you yesterday. So again, I'd like someone on the board to please tell me definitively, no, there will not be a street level at grade crossing on Homerton on the light rail. If you have so, one minute left, we will ask staff to respond to this question. Uh, I have actually four minutes left. Okay. Because you set the timer to three, so. Okay. So if so, you have any other statements, make them. Well, I do have other statements, but I want, to, I want to have on tape here that the board was given a chance to tell the public definitively that there will not be an at grade crossing on the busiest section of County Road, with barriers going down every five minutes <coughs> during peak hours. Because if a train's going every 10 minutes, that means one's going one direction every 10 minutes, one's going another every 10 minutes. That's every five minutes, barriers will be coming down on the busiest section of County Road in, in Pinellas County. And I just want for the record that we have that the board 
no, no board member was willing to say there will not be a crossing there. There will not be a street level crossing. So it is a matter of ding, 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 every five minutes. Yes, I did have some other comments. Um, the misinformation from Connect Tampa Bay continues. Mr. Thurman said that the email from No Tax to Attract, No Tax to Attracts, it said every single senior is entitled to DART. That's not what it said. It said every qualified senior. This is the same misinformation. And Mr. Johnny Johnson, who is in the audience today, tried to propagate in the meeting Saturday morning in Dunedin. Um, the reality is that most seniors qualify just about the time they stop driving. Mr. Terzian referred to those in the private industry, in private private sector, as those who can hide their actions, meaning that they don't have to disclose um, who they email, who they communicate with documents. Mr. Terzian doesn't seem to understand that the reason we have. Sunshine Law. The reason we have public records requests is because tax dollars are being spent. I found this comment frankly offensive. On the issue of the Homeland Security Grant, uh, either you are entitled to the money, in which you keep it, or you're not entitled to the money, in which case you return it. Uh, my understanding is that the official position of PSTA to this day is they did nothing wrong with that grant money, yet they returned it. As a taxpayer, I, I have a problem with that. You know, either you did nothing wrong, in which case you keep the money, you, and you, you, you fight for the tax base to hang on to that money. Or you return and say, well, you know, we didn't follow the guidelines. We don't agree we didn't follow the guidelines, but we think that DHS will determine that we didn't follow the guidelines, so we're returning the money. When I first set foot in Florida, it was in 1979, it was to go to Disney World and visit some friends. Like many people, you know, that's what you come for. And the sales tax was 4%. In fact, when my dad was born, the sales tax was zero. And there might be some people sitting on this board who were born when it was zero. So it was 4%, now you want to make it 8%. When is, more, when, when is it enough? It seems that we have a case here of always more, never enough. And there's been a call here for civility. Um, someone uh, from PSTA headquarters here, took a survey, filled out one of no tax or track surveys. In the comment section, they wrote, you people are ridiculous. They wrote that to no tax or tracks. How do, how do we know? Because we log the IP address. Not meaning we, no tax or tracks, but I'm a vendor. Uh, so that's one thing that was said by someone to here at PSTA. And Mr. Barkley <coughs> well knows that he began an email to uh, no tax tracks with the words listen, turn ball, and then he's threatening federal prosecution. So it cuts both ways. Civility goes both ways. And once again, I'm going to give you a chance to tell me there will be no gray levels. Yes, I will respond to your question. You um, haven't responded yet. I've been waiting for two weeks. <coughs> Take your comments. Um, our staff will respond to that. There's a whole lot of your comments that I will respond to whether the word you and I have a debate as you lose in front of uh, at every college, and we just disagree on that. We talked about um, rail housing investment at Gandhi, Seminole Boulevard, Starkey, Belcher, Roosevelt. Now we're talking about it on Arlington. Uh, so we just disagree on that. Um, we think it can be implemented without causing an increase in congestion. And I won't go through this ability piece. I'll just die and ask you a question, but I, will, I won't do that. Um, <laughs> um, Commissioner Barton. With regard to the comment just made by Mr. Rest, no tax contracts penetrated a private email, a proprietary email of all state insurance companies. They have no right to be on that. There's no reason for anything to do with PSDA on that private email. And the legal department of all state protects their emails very, very strongly. That's the second time after I previously asked to have that removed that they did that. Thank you, Mr. Barton. Um, next speaker is Kathy Swanson.
names of Kathy Sports and Treasure Island, Florida. And I too want to reiterate that the removal of Brad Miller is something that you definitely should consider doing. He has abused federal funds. He has also supported a union effort to boycott mom and pop type businesses that support Greenlight. Uh, or excuse me, that oppose Greenlight, the mom and pop folks that are standing to to have increased taxes, sales taxes, when they buy their um, supplies for their businesses. Also, um, Mr. Miller has created a um, culture of corruption in all of this situation that we're discussing today. He's misled the board about the transit numbers that uh, will get our federal funding for this proposal. And I think the board should thoroughly investigate this evidence and make the right decision about removing that number. And I also want to comment on the science situation that Judy Peterson uh, brought up. And that is that I have been personally involved with code enforcement on Treasure Island. And they assured me that they are not removing our no tax for tax signs. So there is nothing left for me to assume but that proponents of green light are removing our signs. Because the green light went right next to it is remaining. And we have pictures of how people have taken box cutters and sliced up our, our $350 signs out on the right way. Right. So I heard laughter when people were talking about that, but it's a very serious thing. And I, I talked to the citizenry, and they see what is happening, and they wonder about the caliber of people working for this proposal. And that's all I have to say. Please do make the right decision today. Thank, thank you, Ms. Swanson, and I'll agree with you on the issue of signs. Said, welcome to my world. Yeah. <laughs> that happens yeah. in every campaign on both sides. We have not done so, anything to agree with us. Please, please, folks, let's, let's continue being civil. We're doing a good job. From both sides, let's tell both of our supporters that we don't support that. The signs that go up is being said. The folks who vote on us and look forward to going forward. Thank you. Uh, next is Ken Elliott. Good morning. Good morning. Last meeting before the vote, Greenlight. Really? I'm excited. <laughs> Everybody else is. Um, I did know, I'd just like to say that uh, uh, the union had a pub crawl uh, since last meeting in both downtown St. Pete and Dunedin, and both were a success. Uh, all the restaurants and everything were uh, very hospitable to us, and we were able to get out there and talk to the people directly and, and have a good time and support the union. It was great. Um, what I'd like to address is uh, Commissioner Welsh made a comment a few months ago. So the closer we get to the vote, the rhetoric is going to heat up. And it has, but it's kind of, I mean, it, it really is skyrocketing. Um, I can tell you that I'm seeing, I'm now seeing vandalism of taxpayer property. That is our bus shelters. Um, people breaking the glass, people writing and throwing that marker, you know. Things and which is kind of odd because you know, it's people trying to say they're standing up for taxpayer money, yet they're destroying taxpayer. Um, and I also wanted to bring something that uh, I wanted to bring us out. Um, I was I've been called a couple times with meeting with safety and security. Um, uh, yeah, I am a union member, and but I guess I mean, I have been told that uh, they have pulled my public records. I have personally seen on Facebook <coughs> that uh, we have Mr. Elliott's work schedule if anybody wants it. You know, uh, these kind of tactics, uh, you know, uh, I will not be intimidated by these. The union will not be intimidated by these kind of tactics. And, but it really makes me feel good because if Greenlight was such a bad plan, why would, these, why would they have to resort to these kind of tactics? I don't know if it's kind of a measure to keep us quiet or something like that. But, um, uh, you know, we're not, we're not going to back off. Uh, we support Greenlight, and we will continue to do so. And we appreciate all of you for standing strong, because I know public transit politically can be shaky ground, both Republicans and Democrats. And we're very proud of all of you. And uh, I know you've heard a lot of rhetoric about our CEO, and uh, also people up here speaking. Oki and I had a quick 30-second meeting, and the union has decided that we will not let Brad Miller resign. 
So the opposition is no vote. Thank you all very much. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker is Dave Kovar speaking for uh, himself, Jesse Forkan, and Vivian Peters. So he has nine minutes. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, uh, okay, that's how I run that way. Uh, I appreciate your attention, and I hope I don't run too long. My name is Dave Kovar. As you know, I live at 305 Las Pratos Drive in Safety Harbor. Today I'm here as a member of the UU uh, Clearwater Unitarian uh, Universalist because while transit is important for the environment and most part of the world, which is why I'm usually here, it also has a second human face. Many of you know my commitment to the poor and the working poor and those striving to improve their standing, folks trying to get themselves back to school. My heart breaks to hear when the plight of the poor is used by those opposing their best chance to get forward. I don't want to be here today. I have much better things to be doing than to stand here again. But here I am, forced to address this torrent of angry accusations and crazy claims about smoking guns, restaurant boycotts, demands for resignations, and payola. I'm here to set the record straight and to represent the thousands of citizens in Dallas who are frankly sick and tired of a constant barrage of negative mean-spirited accusations flying in the air. Voters simply want information and facts, not name-calling, <coughs> daily spam into their mailbox, and talks of crazy conspiracies. So what do you as a board do about these constant, almost daily calls for resignations? Bear with me. Three months ago, we resolved an issue about PSDA paying for green light literature, signs, and especially bus wraps with green light graphics on The opponents called it illegal and a big scandal because you spent taxpayer money to endorse green light. They posted this claim on the internet, they wrote about it in newspapers, they harped about it in their public speeches. They encouraged, finally, Senator Brandeis to launch a state investigation. The PSDA did something I thought was very smart. They said, go ahead, you won't find anything. Well, for several weeks, they then crowed that green light is under a state investigation, not mentioning that any investigator. And as we know, <coughs> several weeks later, the Inspector General came back and said exactly as predicted, there's no wrongdoing. However, the blogs immediately lit up. That just proves that the Inspector General was on the payroll of green light. He needs to be investigated now. <coughs> because for the opponents, somehow reality contradicts, cannot contradict, this previous narrative. For them, it's like this exoneration did not happen. We hear from uh, opponents that our tax will remove $100 million from our local economy. Yet the truth is, Greenlight is going to return this money to the local economy. Cars, gasoline, insurance are things that take money from our economy. They send them up to Wall Street, they send them to Saudi Arabia. Rental cars for tourists take money from the economy. We hear 8% will be the highest sales tax in the state, but no one mentions that on the same day as our election, Polk County is having the exact same election, and should there pass, it's very likely that we will never spend one minute with the highest so-called sales tax in the state. And of course, we all know that as soon as Greenlight passes, Hillsborough's going to go the same way. In Florida, we have no income tax. The only way to pay for transit is county after county goes for it. It's going to be with sales tax. So maybe we're going to have two counties, not one, in the beginning, but eventually it'll be three, four, five, and more. The opponents continue to say PSDA has never lowered taxes when they've been shown data that says that's simply not true. And as for signs, oh my God. I personally have put up over 100 signs that have magically disappeared. Now I know that some of them were removed by the people there because you go out and you see the lawn is cut and everybody's sign is missing, whether it's for a councilman, whether it's for the red team, or whether it's for the green team. Then later they beat me back and they have a new red sign. So I understand it's not that everybody stole my sign, it's just a little quicker than me. But there are other times, and I have used some various techniques, I'm a bright guy, for instance, there was a sign from uh, Peggy O'Shea and Brian Natalia 
during the uh, primary that it sat there for the length of the primary, and then the primary was over, and that sign sat another two full weeks. Nobody cared about that sign sitting there for two weeks. So I went up, removed the sign, left the wire in the exact same spot, put my sign on top of it, and the very next day it disappeared. But why would somebody not care about this? I can't say, well, it was in my way, you can't say, well, it was on my lawn. The only reason that sign was removed because it was green light. Next, I did something nice. I had signs on a uh, fence uh, next to a pond. Also on that fence was a sign for one of the independent candidates. So I clipped my sign on that fence, and I clipped his sign on that fence. We came back, and someone had cut the clips on my sign and removed it, but the clips on his sign were still in place, meaning his sign hadn't been removed and he came back. Someone specifically came, clipped the signs on my green light, and removed my sign. So when I hear, oh, they're stealing our signs, I want nothing to As for the folks that cut their sign and, oh, uh, we heard all about on TV, the green sign completely disowned it, I would point out at the beginning of this election, I sent a, a letter to both Dr. Caleb and Mark Hazel and saying, please, let's play fair. We'll be telling our side, I'd like to see you send a note to your side telling people to just leave the signs alone. Let's not have a sign more. Yet I hear from people, is anyone working on Greenway? All I see are red signs, and I think that's the proof of putting them on signs. Listen, the red sign, the red side keeps scaring people. About 10 years of rail construction making East Bay a nightmare. Even though we all know that for the first eight years it's going to only be planning, approvals, and land acquisition, nobody's going to break ground until the ninth year of the plan. We hear about uh, the, uh, why are they wasting money by buying uh, two Cadillac buses where they could be buying three Chevys? Or the, the quotes that uh, how expensive the 10 rails, uh, the 10 years of rail. But no one ever mentions that you should be costing all this across the lifetime. I'm thinking of people sitting around in the bar saying that Joe Madden should have put this batting order in or she should have sent this guy. You know, there's a reason we have professional planners. There's a reason we have professional transit people that go to school, people that hire uh, analysts to work on this, not just a bunch of amateurs. I defer to you guys. I mean, I have a bunch of bright ideas, but I'm certainly an expert. So what I'm talking about here is that we have a pattern of deciding something is true and then simply ignoring <coughs> any explanation or any proof that contradicts that personal opinion. Even ignoring when official findings of an official third-party auditor proves that to be true. It still appears on websites, it still appears in letters to the editor, just simply denying the truth. So what do you guys do when those parties ask, now demand for the second time, the third time, the fourth time, that Brad Miller be fired and be hauled out of this room directly to jail? Well, listen, they sincerely believe what they believe despite reality. America is a great country. You are free to believe a perpetual emotion machine or in the Easter Bunny. However, as expected members of the PST board, as elected representatives of the county, of various cities, as private citizens of high esteem with experience in the law and private transportation industry, I ask you each to act responsibly, responsibly in the face of continued nonsense. Let the angry speak their mind, but please postpone any action for a few weeks until after the election. And then here's my suggestion. Let's have a full and thorough investigation into what must be hundreds of claims that have been made in the last couple of years. As a matter of fact, I'm retired and I have the right credentials. Let me volunteer to chair this first pass. It should be good entertainment. Let's get this, in, but let's get the important people back to work. By that I mean you and all of the PSTA. Get this project moving. Get to transit moving. And let's get the economy for our cities and the county moving. I personally have my eye on a small apartment somewhere along that new rail line in Largo. In about 10 years, I should be ready to give up my car and that's where I want to be living. Thank you all for your hard work, your public service, and 
and your extreme patience through this day of all time. And thank you for your attention today. Thank you, Mr. Barbara Hazelton called me up 
aside before the meeting, he said, I know why you're here. This is not about water fluoridation. And I said, Barbara, I said, I have to agree with you that this is not about water fluoridation. Water fluoridation is about the health and well-being of 700,000 of our residents here. I said, but Greenland Nellis is about one million residents here in Nellis County, and the health, well-being, and future of our county's children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. It's about economic development and helping our kids come back here. I said, but where you're incorrect is that the tactics are the same. The tactics use fear, Hitler, scaring old people with hit emails, and all the other things that people said. I'm uh, proud to say that I would have gladly taken an outdated rail system here this morning, which was, was introduced in 1825, versus an outdated Mercedes-Benz as someone else to appear this morning that was invented in 1984, some 70 years later. I would like to end with other words than my own. It is a song by Johnny Cash called Man in Black. It's very appropriate to this. Well, you wonder why I always dress in black, why you never see bright colors on my back. And why does my appearance seem to have a somber tone? Well, there's any reason for things that I have on. I wear the black to the poor and beaten down, living in the hopeless countryside of town. I wear it for the prisoner who has long paid for his crime, but there is there because he's the victim of the crimes. This is not about prisoners, it's about our poor and needy. Always. I <clears throat> excuse me. I wear the black for those who've never read or listened to the words that Jesus said about the road to happiness through love and charity. Why do you think he's talking straight to you and me? What we're doing, mighty finest, I do suppose, in our streets of lightning, cars, and fancy clothes. But just so we remember of the ones who are held back up there, up front, on the man in black. I wear it for the sick and lonely old, for the reckless ones who bad trip left in the cold. I wear the black and mourning for the lives that could have been each week to lose an undefined men. I wear it for the thousands who have died, believing that the Lord was on their side. I wear it for another hundred thousand who have died, believing that we all were on their side. Well, there's things that never will be right, I know, and things need changing everywhere you go. Until we start to make a move to make a few things right, you'll never, never see me wear a suit of white. And lastly, I'd love to wear a rainbow every day and tell the world that everything's okay, but I'll try to carry off a little darkness on my back. Thank you, writer. I'm the man in black. Thank you all for everything that you've done for us to move this country forward. God bless you all. Thank you. Next speaker, and this is the last part that I have, is um, Mrs. John Burns. Uh, we like canals will raise our sales tax to 8% and be the highest in the state with no sunset provision for at least 50 years. And for most voters today, that will mean never a chance in their lifetime to relook at this. Uh, it is not only penalizing the poor, the middle class, the student seniors, and, and then some, uh, but it will hurt the mainstream business in our county. Now, these sentiments were expressed to me yesterday evening, unsolicited by a Mr. Alain Lamar that would like to be represented today to me. Mr. Lamar is a 71-year-old, longtime resident of our area and has operated a variety of businesses along the beaches for years. He is the quintessential example of the Ameri pursuing and achieving the American dream. He came here at 15 as an immigrant from Europe to the gates of Ellis Island, to the land of opportunity. He became a high school teacher, a college professor, and a successful landlord, business owner, and currently resides in Clearwater Beach. And he owns a business here. He owns a business in Clearwater Beach and on St. Beach. He is opposed to green light <coughs> on many levels and contends that it will be devastating to small businesses that will feel the impact of the higher expense for supplies, inventory, insurance, common area costs, and then some. And then what will happen is that it will result in people cutting back their businesses, perhaps losing their businesses, and certainly in order to try to maintain the business, 
to cut back on jobs. He also said that he observes very little ridership on the beach trolley. <coughs> Sometimes he rides it, you know, when his um, father's being a paper or service, and that he'll ride it in the clear water beach all the way to some people who turn this up this is good. And that, uh, you know, he'll have about six or seven um, uh, fellow riders. He also observes down in the on the beach, uh, since his business is right there by the uh, turnaround. That they're rarely in the morning when we work more than six or seven people on that project. Now we have heard these concerns over and over by other people other than Mr. Hamilton. Uh, but Greenlight has spent a million dollars and more trying to convince us differently that the highest sales tax in the state is good for everything. We don't, we don't understand that. Even members of the Clearwater Chamber recognize that this could be bad for business for the business community. And last week, even though that chamber led the, you know, had the banner for Greenlight in the straw poll, Greenlight went, Greenlight went down 30 to 44. So even the real estate environment that, you know, the Board of Realtors appears to be all behind this, but individuals in the real estate business are, are very much against it. So I just want to say in closing that. Let's save our buses, let's improve our bus service to the 1.6% of the people who use it. They need it, we support that. But Greenline is a train program. We do not do that, and it is a bad deal for the people of the North Thank you. And thank you on behalf of Mr. Allen tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Burns. I have